My name is Isaac, and um, this is basically the story of how I found Jesus. Um, it starts off at a very young age. I grew up in church, so I was around um, people that believed in the Bible. My parents were believers from before I was born. Um, they both were in the faith, deep in the faith. They trusted the Lord with everything. Um, growing up, we, we saw many financial miracles as well as healings and, and all that stuff, just God and in, just intertwining within our lives. And I, I got to see at a very young age um, the power of God. And, um, and I grew up with many complications in my health. I grew up with severe asthma, um, really bad allergies. I grew up with, uh, I believe I was two years old. I had to be taken to the hospital because my dad saw me come out of my room and my, my chest was going like this in and out because my, I couldn't breathe through my lungs very well. And so I was literally using my muscle in my chest to just, just get any amount of air I could into my body so I can be alive. Um, and so I was rushed to the hospital. They found out that I had um, RSV, a collapsed lung, and pneumonia. Um, they said that I would not live. And, and so lying there, I, I remember my mom telling me that my aunt actually was in the room by herself with me and saw, with all that happening, me having a seizure. And so it was an obvious attack from the enemy to take me out early. Um, and this wasn't just one, one incident. It, 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 was, it happened a couple of times growing up as, at a young age and um, the effects of it was still going on. And so uh, they, they said that I was gonna die. This was multiple times at the doctors. I would keep going back and they said, I just, he's not gonna make it. Um, couple times my my parents actually brought the church over that we were attending to pray for me and my mom and my dad uh, are intercessors and were intercessors and so what they would do um, they would shut up the doctor when they said I was gonna die they would go to the room and pray and they would pray over me lay hands on me and every time I was in the hospital I would come out completely fine um, healed delivered set free and uh, that didn't set me free from the from the asthma then uh, I still struggle with that just not at the point of almost dying um, so so yeah I grew up just with uh, so many weird complications like that and um, but having the faith in God um, seeing that I was healed and and uh, knowing that God had me in his hands the whole time. Knew the Lord in a way through my parents, didn't have my own faith built up in relationship, but saw my parents pursuing the Lord. A um, Couple years go on and we changed churches because the church we were going to, uh, they got into a couple weird things, doctrines that didn't line up with the word. And so my parents cut it off and we went to this new church that the Lord led them to. And uh, this is the first time I saw people actually fall out in the spirit, actually like the, the demonstration of gifts uh, and, and people speaking in tongues and uh, just people radical for the Lord. And it was insane transitioning to that. I felt the power of the Lord more than I've ever felt him before. Um, I, at this point, I wasn't going to the Lord and asking for salvation. and and giving my life to him. I was still around 13, 14. But when I was 14, we all went to church camp through that church. And this week of church camp completely changed the directory of my life and how I viewed God. Um, I didn't just know about him after this, I knew him. He encountered me in such a way that so powerful and I remember that week I just I just want to I just look back and, and see as a, a week of revival and <clears throat> it was truly a revival of my soul and it's crazy because I went there to actually see a girl but I came back um, on fire for the Lord
Um, but that star, that fire started to burn out. And uh, come to around high school, I was I was in the middle. I was in the middle of like a lukewarm. I was like lukewarm. I was really trying to figure out my life. I was really trying to figure out who I was. I was hungry for the truth. And little did I know that the truth was right in front of me and my parents were preaching about him the whole time. Even though I had that encounter with the Lord at a young age, my eyes were still blinded from this veil because I went back into the world. After high school, I got heavy into just how to make money. And, and so I was trying to get into entrepreneurship I was trying to have an e-commerce business. And so a couple years, I was just so engulfed in how to make money. I was worshiping money. I was saving every penny I had. And so I can just put that into a business and multiply that, which I thought was what I was going, going to do. Um, so I, I was very obsessed with just to make money, get out of my parents' house and, and do whatever I want, have this big house, have cars. Um, doing that, I became very depressed because nothing was working. And so I went to college um, thinking that I failed. I, was, I, I said, I'm just going to go to college because I can't make money on my own because I didn't want to go back to school at first. But I ended up going to college for about a year and a half. And that time in my life, I became even more depressed. I became just so full of anxiety and, and hatred towards myself because I wasn't finding any fulfillment anywhere in life. And so it just got worse from then on. I, I got even deeper and deeper into the world after that. Um, I ended up for the pretty much for the first time trying to find satisfaction in girls. I, I had a couple relationships and um, I was treated very poorly and uh, I I just fell in this huge hole of just self-hatred and and letting the enemy lie to me that I was worth nothing and I wasn't gonna find fulfillment anywhere I've tried money I've tried everything and 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 this is at the point where I started to drink a lot and uh, because I was heartbroken and there was certain events that took place with different people that it just never worked out. I, I wanted a wife. I wanted a family. I wanted people to love and to take care of, but the people I was getting involved with didn't want that. And they were messing around. They were doing other stuff and um, being very unloyal. And so I was heartbroken. And I started using alcohol as medicine and to fulfill that, that void in my heart. And um, and so I ended up giving, getting into this next relationship to fill that void and uh, pretty much at this point saying, I don't care about my life. I'm just going to fill these desires and um, do whatever I want because it's, I'm too far gone to seek God. And I knew God had, had a plan for me. I knew the Lord um, could save me from this. I knew that He had... He, he had stuff up in store for me that was, he was open with, with ready arms, but I was so deep down into this hole that I felt like I could never crawl out of it. I felt like it would be too hard. I felt like I would, I would be just riding on my parents' faith. And so I said, no, I'm gonna try this again, one more time. And so I got in this relationship with a girl and we, I ended up going farther than I ever have um, with her. And um, I remember while well, we made this relationship official, I actually decided to go out with my, um, one of my buddies. We went out to Santa Cruz for a week. And, uh, and I was leaving um, this new relationship uh, with this girl to go out with my, my buddy for a week at Fort Bragg, or sorry, Santa Cruz. And, and so we're just having a good time. It's 4th of July, we're on the beach, and um, I get a call, or a text actually, saying, you know, since this isn't gonna work out, um, you know, I got back with this other person, 
and so I have to delete you, block you on everything, that whole situation, that whole, that whole thing. And so that happened and I broke because my whole identity was placed on this one person. My whole identity was placed on this lifestyle and my foundation was was alcohol my foundation was this person and that's where I found my love and affection but just like that just in an instant it just all shattered down and I was a few hours away and I couldn't do anything about it and so my friend and, and a couple of his buddies were like hey let's go bowling and I said no I gotta stay back and so I just wanted to stay back and figure things out walk on the beach and that's when I started talking to God again. And I remember just just talking to him and I finally um, got the courage to call my mom and tell her what was happening. And uh, she gave me a lot of encouragement. She, she uh, you know, was talking about the Lord and, and, <clears throat> and basically saying, you know, this is the time that you need to give your life completely to the Lord. And so, and so I do, I get off the phone, I get on that beach, it's like 12 p.m., dark, pitch black. Surprisingly, it's been that whole week, every night it was packed at night, even that late, but that specific night, it was really weird because it was just me on that beach and my friends were still out across town. And it was a very, just quiet night and I remember just popping my earbuds in and just listening to worship for the first time in a long time and I said Lord I I can't do this anymore and I just give you my life I have no idea what's ahead of me uh, but this isn't working anymore this world does not fulfill me and I basically just just stood there with my hands up and I said, Lord, just receive my spirit. You can do whatever you want with it because I was at my wit's end. I was broken, so heartbroken. And I needed, I needed him so badly that I completely gave myself to him that night. And just like that, I felt his spirit so strong. And he came, he walked over and I sensed him just standing next to me on that beach. And the only way I can describe it, describe it what I felt in the spirit was that he, he took a bag just full of just treasure. And I think it was just a bag full of his glory and he just showed me. And I, I remember him, like him saying like, this is what I have for you. This is your future. It is full of joy. It is full of um, passion. It is full of fulfillment. It is full of love. You're gonna have a family. You're gonna have a wife. And I'm, I wanna give this all to you. And, and so that night I just broke down. I gave myself to the Lord. I worshiped and um, went back home. The enemy tried really hard, of course, uh, when someone gives herself to the Lord, the enemy comes and tries to steal that really quick. And so I came back home and that same girl um, came to me and, and was begging for me to come back to her. And so, yeah, I... I made the wrong decision and I said, yeah, let's try this again. And so we went on for a couple months and, and I dug myself that hole again. I got, got back into alcohol. I got back into trying to find fulfillment in this girl because I thought, you know, maybe it's worth another try. Um, and I just didn't have enough faith built up or courage or boldness to, to say no. And so I got back into that. And, and I ended up turning 21. And so that is the age where you can buy alcohol. And I, I'm still living with my parents and they don't obviously agree with alcohol. They, they don't want it in their house, but I decided to sneak some in. And that's when I got really bad. And that's when I started drinking and drinking and I would be drinking full bottles of hard alcohol in one night and um, blacking out every time couple of days a week and and it just got I just got really deep into it and um, I remember just sitting there even praying while I was drunk and 
and just crying out to the Lord, drunk on the floor, face down, just weeping for hours. Like, Lord, what do I do? How do I get out of this? Because I wanted so bad to, to just run out of this situation. And it became, it came to a point where I literally started to become insane. And I would start to run into the wall, just dart into the wall because I felt like I was boxed in to this, in, inside this box where I just could not get out of. I was trapped. I was in so much pain. And and I would literally just get up and just run towards the wall and until I fall asleep. And um, all this time, my parents didn't really know this was happening. Um, and so I just kept it a secret. I remember getting really drunk and being able to hide it. And so I'd go out there just without them even realizing it. And it was, it was a crazy three years this went on for. And, um, and so, so yeah, that went on for a while. And, and I, I finally, it got to a point where we we're in our my relationship with this girl um it was at a scary point where we thought that she was pregnant and nothing in me wanted to be um have a child with this girl nothing in me wanted to have a long-term relationship with this person i knew it was wrong i was very convicted i remember every time i fell into it all i can get out was i'm sorry and I couldn't pray any more than that. It was just, I'm sorry. You have to watch me keep doing this. I don't know how to get out. I'm sorry, please. And it was just a fear of going to hell. Um, but also because I still loved Jesus, but I, I was, I just remember just keep, I kept on doing it in front of him. And um, I remember one night I was over at her place and it was late at night and she's asleep. Everyone's asleep in the house. and. And I'm just sitting there in the bathroom, staring at myself. And just, I, I remember just like picturing my, my body in, in this covered in mud and garbage, muck. Like you, you look at a pig's pen and I was just covered in it and I was stinky, I was disgusting. And I was, I just, I just looked buried. And, and at that moment I heard a voice and I believe he was the voice of the Lord. And he said, what are you doing? And I got so convicted at that, at that moment. And audibly, I remember saying, I don't know. And, and so that was one of those um, times that the Lord was really just trying to shake me and get me out of that. And I eventually do. I eventually get the courage to break it off. Um, but it, it didn't stop right there. Obviously, you break up with someone, you're still gonna go through a lot of pain. And so um, I went through a, a agonizing pain just for a couple months, just sitting on the couch. And because it wasn't just a breakup, it was a soul tie that I had to break. It was, it was sin that I had to get rid of. It was all this stuff that I was just tied to. And I was so deep into it that the Lord, had me go through a time of restoration and deliverance and and so i remember just not even being able to sleep in my own room i would sleep on the couch and i would have my mom stay up with me as she's you know watching a show or something and and um so that went on for a while and um, i went through a deliverance process uh, and a restoration process and and uh, i decided i need to find a church and I went to a couple places, didn't work out. Um, but my friend Jordan, he, he, he mentioned that, that he goes to this church called The Bridge. And so I said, okay, I'll try it. And I ended up coming here. And I, as, as I came here, I met the Lord in ways that I never saw him before. And, I remember having all night prayers when we first started doing all night prayers. Um, I came completely broken. I came completely empty of everything and ready for the Lord to just fill me. And so I remember coming to those so hungry. And um, 
And so I remember the first all night prayer, I, well, I stayed up the whole night and I remember Pastor Pedro as he was leading it, um, he gave me the microphone at the end and all I could shout through my spirit was there's more, there's more, there's more and just shouting that over and over and over again because I, 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 I saw the Lord. It was His glory and he, His manifest presence just took over that room like I've never felt it before. And it gave me such a hunger for the Lord. It was so empowering, so fulfilling that I, after that moment, I rapidly started to heal. I rapidly started to seek the Lord. I rapidly started to see these chains drop just out of nowhere. And it was so rapid, it was so real. And I became so obsessed with God so in love with the Lord. And I remember hours upon hours upon hours, I would be reading the word, I'd be praying. I remember just taking my car and, and driving for hours upon hours, just speaking to my new best friend, Jesus. And, and, and so I began to pray for specific things that the Lord put on my heart. And um, I started praying for a wife. I wanted a wife because you know, spending so much time with the Lord, your faith starts to increase like crazy. And and so my faith started to increase to pray these prayers that it would actually reach heaven, shake heaven, and the Lord started to answer things. And so and so I I started praying for a wife and I was like, I want a wife and I want her to love Jesus and I want her to be as radical as I am about you. I don't I can't go back to a relationship that just blasphemed your name, that, that turned their face away from you. I needed someone that was radical for you. I want someone that loves you, maybe even more than I love you. I just wanted someone, I just wanted to be with someone that we could sharpen iron off of iron and, and grow together in the Lord. And, and I even prayed, I wanna have, I wanna do ministry with her because I wanna take this all the way. I'm not, I have this vision that I just want to live completely for you. I want to I want to see people saved. I want to see salvation. I want to be an evangelist. I want to go out to the nations. I want to do whatever you have for me, Lord. And and so I started praying these bold prayers. And um and so I ended up meeting this girl. And that's Abby, and um we just started very slow. We started talking and we ended up start dating and I remember coming to a point where I was like, listen, I, I really like you, but you can't get in the way of my relationship with the Lord because of, of past experiences. This is the first real thing in my life, and I can't have that taken away from me, and you can't get in the middle of that. And, and she said the same thing. I only said that because I was confident that she was going to say the same thing. She said, no, that's completely where I'm at. You can't get in the way of my relationship. And so by that time started, stuff started growing. We wouldn't even see each other until we were in that secret place with the Lord um, beforehand. And, and so <clears throat> we started praying together and, and we got um, the go from the Lord to, to actually get married. And so I proposed to her. And, and so I'm still living in Oroville, about 40 minutes away, and and the church is in Marysville, and so I need to find a way where I can move out here. And so, miraculously, a door was opened for us, for me to move in over here before we get married. And and so I moved before I even get a job here. I said, Lord, I'm going to move here if I don't get a job right away or not. I'm commuting until you give me a job. And so. Um, I stepped out in faith. That's faith put to work, or that's that's works put to faith, and so, and so that's what I did. I moved out here and I waited for the Lord. I prayed until that right timing, um, and and the Lord gave me a job here, and stuff stuff started to line up, and and uh, she ended up getting a job here uh, right before we got married, and we and we already had a home before we got married, and then we just moved in um, that night. We got married, and it just all worked out. And we had a beautiful wedding. It was amazing. And, and we, we just started to grow so much together. And, and we're getting to see things really 
really pick up in our lives and we've we just been so hungry together for revival because we we came with the, the right intentions with the same intentions with the same goal is to is to reach people um, in this generation and to be an example for people in this generation and <clears throat> and um, yeah we're just super hungry for more of the Lord and and the Lord has redeemed me saved me and I'm excited for what the Lord has next for me.